I, I signed up with Course Careers on February 2nd or 15th of this year. And I signed the offer sheet from Dun & Bradstreet on March 16th. So I'd say about a month and a day. So you literally went from zero experience in tech sales and you just learning about the career to starting a new career in 29 days. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Uh, today, I have a very special guest. Uh, today, I'm going to be interviewing Kevin. And Kevin uh, got into tech sales. And he has a really cool story. And when I saw it, I had to get him on the channel. So I reached out to Troy. And he was able to connect us. And we got him to come on the channel. So thank you so much for coming on today, Kevin. I truly appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Shane. This is great. I couldn't be happier to do this. Awesome. So um, I kind of already know your story, but uh, basically, what was your professional life like before you discovered uh, tech sales? Kind of just let's walk us through the the story and, and like start at the beginning. Uh, so in a phrase, my career, my life before course careers was a feast or famine. Uh, so I worked in the construction industry um, before course careers. I was a member of it for nine, but I was probably active in it for about six. And during that six years, um, you know, you, it was a union. So they'd send you out to various jobs all over the state. Sometimes you'd be sent 30 minutes away. Other times you'd be sent two hours and 30 minutes away. And you, and you had to do it, especially during the apprenticeship, which lasted four years um, it was like, you know, they gave you the work and you had to take it. It was part of the program. Um, you never knew how long a job was going to last. Could last two weeks, could last two months, could last two years. Um, so there was certainly a lot of uh, uh, instability that came with it. But like I said, feast or famine, when, when it was a feast, it was a feast. Like, you know, because you were always working a lot of hours, like whether you're working 10 hour days, 12 hour days, six days a week, seven days a week. You know, you'd see some pretty paychecks uh, rolling in, but over time, uh, especially like right when the pandemic started to unfold, work slowed down and then pretty much came to a complete halt uh, because of the pandemic, because of other outliers, uh, you know, state funding, things like that. And, uh, you know, I was kind of left out of work for two years and it was, you know, talk about famine. And it was pretty, it was pretty scary, especially, you know, cause I have a wife and, and daughter and, you know, benefits are lapsing, no money's coming in. Like we're riding unemployment and the extensions that came out with that and the stimulus money that came in and, you know, just trying to, just trying to make every dollar stretch out. And, you know, it got to a point where it was like, you know, I, I couldn't rely on, on, you know, my union anymore. It was like, I, I got to go out and find something. And so I basically just took the skills that, I thought that uh, were some of my strengths in that uh, industry, which were like my communication skills and outgoing personality, things like that. And uh, a simple Google search for funny enough, we we're talking about uh, alternatives to education and whatnot. <laughs> but I, I looked up uh, jobs that had like, you know, no college, no experience really required. And course careers was like at the top of the list. And, uh, and so it was a no brainer. And that's how I kind of got into that. Awesome. So basically, you were kind of in a situation you, where you were looking for a new career. And uh, you sort of Googled uh, different types of careers you can get into with no experience, because, you know, going back, like doing college, for instance, that would be something where it would be like maybe four to five years, and then you'd be able to get a job. And that's not really an option for a lot of different people out there. Or maybe it is an option for people out there, but they just rather not do it, rack up all that debt, go to school for that long, uh, just for the possibility of, of being able to start a new career. Um, and that's kind of what I've been talking about quite a bit on this channel recently, is there are many people who are in that position where they want to transition into a new career, but they don't want to have to get a degree or they don't want to have to get you know a ton of experience before they can do that. So you discovered Course Careers, uh, which, you know, I brought Troy on the channel. Troy's the CEO of Course Careers. And uh, essentially what Course Careers does is it teaches people how to get a job in tech sales. So can you kind of maybe go into a little bit about what exactly tech sales is? So tech sales, at least in my uh, limited experience, um, over the last three months being with Dun & Bradstreet, anyhow, uh, is in my definition is basically software as a service. So for example, like what, what I do at my company is I try and sell uh, 
sales acceleration platforms such as DMB Hoover's uh, or like not necessarily in sales and marketing, could be in finance, could be in third party risk and compliance. We actually do cover those uh, fields. But um, yeah, basically you could work in an inbound role, an outbound role. Right now I'm in an inbound role where we have uh, web form leads come in from people that visit our website that are interested in signing up for a free trial. I get the web form, it usually has phone number, email, I call them up, see if we can't, uh, you know, see if our solution is a fit for them. I mean, because we're not trying to force it on them, you know what I mean? It, it's not like, that's the thing too that I think people need to understand is like that tech sales and, and sales in this, you know, field, it's not like, like I know me personally, I like sort of like this idea of what sales is that sort of like cutthroat, you know, got to get the deal done at all costs. It's not that at all. A lot of human or uh, emotional intelligence involved with this, a lot of understanding your prospect and seeing if the solution that your company has is actually a fit for them because you don't want to force it. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I mean, I just, I feel like that in a nutshell is kind of what being an SDR is like that. And if you like research, you know, cause you get to do a lot of research into the companies that you're prospecting, whether it's in an inbound or outbound role, it does play a part. So I'd say that's what it is in a nutshell, what you learn in course careers. Got it. Okay. So yeah, at this point in the story, basically you, you started uh, course careers um, you, you decided to kind of go with Troy's training. And by the way, he does have a free training. I will link that down in the description as well as the pinned comment below. That free training will help you decide whether you want to use Course Careers as a service. And essentially what Troy does is he trains you and then he gets you interviews with companies, right? So he has partnerships with companies where he gets you interviews with them where you can, you know, they will essentially kind of train you and you'll actually get paid to be trained, right? So, uh, which is pretty nice, right? A lot of people are going to college paying $80,000 to be trained and you get you get paid to be trained. So that's that's not too bad. That's not not a, not a bad thing at all. But essentially you, you started off with course careers and how long did it take you before you actually got a job? So I, I signed up with course careers on February 2nd or 15th of this year. And I signed the offer sheet from Dun & Bradstreet on March 16th. So I'd say about a month and a day. Got it. Wow. And then February is the shortest month in the year. So I believe that's about 29 days, right? So <laughs> that's... <laughs> I completely that, forgot about that. That is like pretty amazing. Wow. I think that's like 29 or 30 days. So you literally went from zero experience in tech sales and you just learning about the career to starting a new career in 29 days is am i am i getting that right yeah that, that's that's about the summation of it yeah right okay so like guys i i have looked at so many different ways of getting educated on this channel and i've gone over e everything you guys know i've gone over just about everything on this channel i've talked about like traditional college I've talked about alternative colleges like WGU, TESU, where you can get a degree in like, you know, one to three years. A lot of the time I've talked about different ways of getting an accelerated degree. Um, I was able to get my doctorate in about, you know, five years and nine months, for instance. So I've talked about all kinds of different ways of getting into careers on this channel. Um, there's also boot camps. Typically, boot camps are going to take you somewhere between six months to 18 months to get a job, depending on the career you go into and how good the boot camp is. Uh, I, this is the first time guys where I have found a service that can literally get you a job in one month. I mean, that, that is, and, and like, not, we're not talking about just like a, like an entry level, like low, low type of job. We're talking about like a really good career in one month. This is the, this is the first service I've ever found that can do that. I, I don't think you can get much better than that. I mean, that is, that's just incredible. The results that uh, Troy is getting, I, I've never seen anybody get results like that. And I've looked at just about every possible service or boot camps, online training, like all, all across the internet. And, and Troy is definitely getting the most just insane results I've ever seen. So let's kind of talk about your lifestyle kind of, and, and like, I wouldn't say lifestyle, but I guess like professionally speaking, what your life is like now with your new career versus what it was like before with your old career. Ooh, um, what's like now 
is uh, stability. Uh, knowing that I'll have a job tomorrow, uh, knowing that it is performance based, but as long as I show up and bring it every day and, and hit my numbers that I'll probably have a job for some time to come. Um, whereas, and not to mention the remote factor. I mean, a lot of these jobs that you can get through course careers are fully remote. Some of them, they do offer hybrid or in position or, or in office positions, but a lot of them are remote. And I like that myself personally, because it allows me more time to be at home with my uh, wife and daughter who, you know, transition into my old career and my old way of life. Sometimes it, it would be like a ghost living in this house. Like I'd barely get to see them. I'd be coming home late and, you know, kid would be in bed. My wife would be ready to go, you know, go to sleep and whatnot. It's like hardly see anybody. And um, not to mention, like I had mentioned earlier, like the, the instability, not knowing if I'm going to have a job tomorrow. It doesn't matter how great I'm doing in the position that I have on the job, but like, you know, projects end or sometimes, you know, somebody needs to save some money somewhere. So they lay a couple of people off just so they can get a project done under budget. You know, it's, it, it is, in fact, it is very day and night. So. Got it. And one thing I kind of want to talk about is sort of, uh, you, you sort of mentioned it, I think, is kind of just the importance of uh, when you have a career where you have a very in-demand skill um, and there's just a lot of demand for, for people who have experience in that career and can do that career in general, um, it just tends to make everything else better. So it's like, that in my experience and my research that's like the number one thing you want to look at is the demand for the career so even if it's not that high paying what you'll notice is if there's a ton of demand for a particular career the pay tends to go up really quickly um how well they treat you uh they they, they just tend to treat you quite a bit better um because they know that you have a skill that's you know it's not easy to find um, they give you more benefits. They they reward you more. So you're you know when you if you work hard, you're actually rewarded for it. Um, you know if you put in extra time, you're actually rewarded for it, which is really nice. It just it just tends to make everything else better. And so that's kind of one of the things. Like if you you know you guys can go on LinkedIn right now, type in you know look in jobs, sort by entry level, and then type in business development or sales development, which by the way, I probably should have uh, mentioned that. The uh, tech sales is kind of the easy way of saying it, but the, the roles are actually called business development representative, uh, sales development representative. And then sometimes they're referred to as software sales as well. Um, but yeah, if you type in sales development or business development uh, on LinkedIn at the entry level, you're gonna see hundreds of thousands of results. And the reason for that is because companies really need people in these positions, uh, even at the entry level. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of positions out there where there is a lot of demand for it, but there's not a lot of demand at the entry level. So you'll see like, oh, there's tons of demand on BLS, for instance, but there, the demand is for people who already have experience. And unfortunately, with all the automation, outsourcing, streamlining, et cetera, a lot of the time, those entry level roles, it's it's like very difficult to get experience. So it'll be this situation where you need three years of experience for like an entry level job, which is just totally silly. It's like like a meme, basically. Um, but the reason for that is because of all the automation, outsourcing and streamlining that's going on. And but they still need people who are good at the job. It's just they need people who have, actually have experience. So I really recommend uh, anybody watching this. Uh, go onto LinkedIn and, and sort by entry level and then look up these different roles and you'll see that, you know, how much uh, actual need there is for these different jobs, because really uh, the amount of demand pretty much determines everything else uh, at, at the end of the day. Like supply and demand is kind of like the law of gravity uh, at the end of the day. So um, let's get into, if you're comfortable, Kevin, let's get into talking about salary. So you can either, if you're comfortable, tell me what salary you were making, or if you're not, just maybe give us a general overview of the typical salary that you would expect, uh, as, uh, in tech sales, uh, your first year. So when I was in construction, it was, like I said, it was union construction, um, 
So I'm not going to go into the uh, dollars per hour because it was an hourly thing. Uh, but I will tell you what I did make per year. Uh, so maybe that could give you a little insight. Um, so I would probably make just about what I'm making now uh, with Dun & Bradstreet and tech sales. The only caveat is in, in construction, I should have been making more, but because I was maybe only working three months, four months out of the year, you know, and the rest of the time I was unemployed, either on unemployment or just, you know, stolen my money away for a rainy day, like that sort of deal. Um, it was only coming about out to what I'm making now with Dun & Bradstreet and tech sales, which is about, well, on target earnings, I should say anyway, $65,000 a year. Got it. And that's, with, and that's with benefits, I should say. Got it. And do you mind if I ask uh, how how old you were when you first started Tech Sales? Well, you just started it. So how do you mind if I ask how old you are? When I started in Course Careers, I was 32. I'm now 33. Oh, okay. So I, you just had a birthday. Have, happy late birthday to you. Well, thank you. Awesome. And I think I kind of forgot to ask you just in general, can you sort of tell me what Course Careers was like? Just kind of give like a brief overview of the program and what working with uh, Troy was like? Yeah, absolutely. So um, the program was a learn at your pace program. Uh, so whether it took you like me, like little under a month or it took you three months, like you could still get it done how it made sense to you. Um, he had online learning modules that he personally created, you know, little videos that he made. Uh, coupled with uh, some books such as uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People like uh, by Dale Carnegie, uh, Fanatical Prospecting by Jeb Blunt, and uh, Spin, who the author is uh, alluding me at the moment. But those were the three main books that you got to read and were tested on. Uh, there's a Discord channel that he set up where you can actually get some good, well, now it's kind of set up. Before it was, we all got FaceTime with him like every monday and thursday but now since the course has gotten even bigger and there's even more students we're all kind of split off into groups now into you know where we are in the course like right now i'm kind of like i i actually help uh students that are in the interview phase that are about to start go you know applying for jobs and interviewing with jobs and then some people might be lumped in with uh you know like uh, like they're only reading how to win friends and influence people like they're in that part of the course um, but Troy still uh, will chat with you in the Discord if you have any questions or you're confused by anything. He's still very much hands on. And um, the end of the course, which was probably the greatest part, was that he personally interviews you, tests your knowledge and everything that you learned, uh, goes over a mock interview, mock cold call, pretty much what you'll actually go through in a real life interview when you when you finally get one uh, with one of these tech companies. Um, so, you know, not, not to speak poorly on any other program, but it's like, I just, I don't know too many programs like that where you get that kind of FaceTime with the, with the creator and CEO, you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Troy is extremely passionate about alternative education like I am. And uh, he is really just invested in getting amazing results for his students. And I, I think he really does have like a, a special talent for bringing the best out in people as well, uh, because... I mean, the, the results that he's getting, I mean, as good as the program is, I, I think it has something to do with the person too, <laughs> for sure, the, with the results he's getting. He really uh, has, I mean, he has great sales skills. He has a great ability to, to bring out the best and get people really excited about things. And, and uh, that is, I think that is probably his special talent. Um, so awesome. Thank you for going over the course and uh, thank you for coming on the channel as well, Kevin, and sharing your story. Really appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you maybe later on. You can update me like a year from now or something like that, possibly. And uh, we can see what what's happening at that point. Yeah, that sounds good to me, Shane. Thank you for very much. Uh, thank you very much for having me on. All right. Have a good one. Take care.